Hello everybody, Ian Robson here, and welcome back to Valley East USA. Alright, we got a couple things going on today. If you recall from the previous episode, we finally bought a header for our combine, and uh, I originally said I was going to buy a different header to see if I can get a uh, color that better matches the uh, the actual combine itself. And uh, I have actually bought this header multiple times now, in attempts in different colors to see if I can get it close to match this bit closer I think it's always the same it doesn't appear it doesn't appear to change so unless I get the in-game header uh, I think this is the closest we're gonna get it's more orangey than yellow but it'll have to do anyways let's pick up this header here so as you can see I have the combine here uh, he is just I'm getting prepared for the harvest uh, I believe if uh, I had to guess I think the uh, mass Ferguson is almost done seeding uh, with that cedar. Turns out that cedar is also a no-till cedar which is pretty awesome. I wasn't sure about it uh, but it is indeed a no-till cedar. Uh, we'll just leave this here for the time being. So here it's doing the last pass. Turn that down a wee bit. And that, that's probably the last little bit right there. Survey says, oh why am I doing that again? Oh my goodness. I made a video the other day and I was like, I was commenting on the fact that I kept, I don't know why I've been saying that so much lately. Um, I haven't been watching like Family Feud or anything like that, it's just for some reason that has been the uh, my go-to phrase the last little while. I guess a while ago it used to be uh, that's what it boils down to, but right now I guess it's, uh, what does the survey say? I don't know why. I have no idea. Anyways, as you can see he's just finishing up here. I, I don't know why, I like the, I like the look of this particular cedar. I think it's really neat. Uh, it's very similar to the Vaderstadt uh, Rapid, but uh, this one is the Rapid A, and in game we have the Rapid A 600S, and this is the oh, it's the same one, but it is different because in the in game one doesn't have this little front wheel part here. All right, looks like that is it. We'll wait for it to fold up, and then we'll move it out of the way. Or maybe it's not going to move. We'll just do this. There we go. Finish up the last little bit there. Fold it up. Lift it up. There we go. Nice. Put four wheel drive on. There we go. It's funny, for some reason, my four wheel drive button is the same button as the unfold button. I don't understand that. I have to go look through my uh, my key bindings, because obviously there's a Oops, I forgot to put this back down. I kept uh, exiting the game and coming back in the game to see if I could change the color of the uh, of the the header, but uh, apparently that wasn't uh, wasn't in the cards. So I just left. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for the time being. Uh, we can always upgrade or change our combine, but that's honestly probably one of the better combines, one of the huge combines we have. There we go. Drop that there. Perfect. And we'll just uh, we'll just leave this close to it, I guess. We don't need it for the time being. All right, so we also have these trailers here. We're just going to detach those and uh, move them out of the way for the time being. Or not move, move the truck out of the way, I should say. Uh, one thing I want to do is just come over here, and we're going to speed up time a little bit, and we're going to see what's what. Of course, the best way to, if you want to get the best possible uh, coverage uh, when you seed your field, obviously do it yourself. I just uh, don't. I've I've done it a few times. Let's say that. So I just choose not to do it all the time. Every now and then, usually with smaller seeders, I'm not uh, I'm not so enthusiastic about it. But with bigger ones, it doesn't bother me nearly as much. All right, let's go ahead and progress time and see what's what. So remember, we have the growth control manager in here, which is an awesome mod, by the way. Check it out. Look in the top right hand corner. So we're speeding up time, yada yada yada. And then once midnight hits, growth control manager comes up. Oh, it's only one day? Oh, I need to change that. Apparently it's only one day. It should be uh two days, but say la vie. Uh you can actually adjust the growth control manager, so you can make it like one day or two day or three days or whatnot. So um what's happening is the growth control manager and the soil mod are kind of uh, not playing nice together. 
So that should not take, that should not be uh, that short of time. That should actually be like two days essentially, but in the end, that's what happens. I don't think, I don't remember, do we actually buy any animals in the end? I don't think we did. Oh, interesting. That actually, uh, okay. You'll have to remind me. Did we say we were going to get animals on this map? I honestly don't remember. I think, uh, I think that was the intention, I want to say. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, that was the intention, but I, uh, don't recall 100% if it was or not. So you have to let me know. And this truck is always so quiet. I don't know what it is. In comparison to the other vehicles, it's like the, the quietest truck we have. But it is not a it's not a bad truck. Alright, let's get the combine rolling. As you can see, I put the vehicle switcher mod back in. I got tired of tabbing through a bazillion vehicles and trying to figure out which one was the right one I wanted all the time, so anyways. Finally, this is like the first corn corn. First harvest we've done that wasn't corn since we began, actually. Yeah, actually that's true. Holy smokes. Alright, so as you can see, all the grass is grown once again only takes one cycle I should really change that I need to change the it's it's interesting when you have two different maps one with soil mod one without soil mod uh, you run into situations like this where it's like uh okay so what I'm going to do like you run into weird situations where one uses it and one doesn't and because of that you uh, you're not sure well, I always forget which one I'm supposed to have in the file and which one I'm not, so... I think we're clear? Yes, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll hook up the header here, and... Watch every... If you ever watch this in real life, it's actually quite amazing to watch uh, the driver do this. It's like... It's um, a lot slower than what you could do in Farm Sim, so it's like a very, like, you know, to be very gentle with it, because, you know... The header's worth like $75,000. Alright, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to move this guy over here for a quick sec. Let's hop into our big M. And I'll get this guy... I'll get this guy mowing. I'm really not a fan of the way it looks when you're inside the cab when the mowers are folded like that. But, what are you going to do? Alright, uh, let's get him mowing on field 9, I think. Would be a good place for him to start. It'll be somewhat out of our way. Mo F9, 13, first. So we'll just uh, set him to the first waypoint and we'll hop in the combine here. Move out of the way for him. We also need to line up anyways, so. Uh, what we'll do is I'll hop into the truck and we'll use the truck to unload the canola. F10, unload. There we go. And we'll set him up properly, and then I'll do the combining because I love combining. I don't know why. I've, I've mentioned this before. I, I'm still not certain as to the reason why that's the case. But uh, out of all the activities, combining is one of my favorites. All right. Let's get fired up here. Harvest a little bit of canola. How fast? Can I really go 17 kilometers? That seems awfully fast. There we go. Uh, let's set the cruise control just a little bit slower than that. Maybe 10 kilometers an hour probably seems a bit more appropriate. <laughs> it's a small field and an enormous header, so I'm not too worried about it. Nice. Now the problem's going to be making sure I don't miss anything. The one thing I wish this had is the... Uh, if you remember the class Lexion 980 and 9, I think it was a 980, 970. Uh, it had like the cameras on the uh, on the edges. I would I would love to see that incorporated into uh, into this combine or some of these combines like this. Uh, but of course you don't, so it makes me a bit sad. Not doing too badly. One of the really cool things about this particular combine is how fast it unloads. It I know people have mentioned this before, but I always like it. It's a nice. It's a uh, it's unrealistic, I realize this, but it, it adds the uh, the capability of doing something like like that. Uh, especially if you're, you know, if you're at like 95% or something like that. You can basically unload the whole combine uh, 
pretty easily actually. Uh, does it show? It shows your RPM down there. You can see that. And doesn't doesn't show the fill level though. I'll, obviously, I don't I'm not using the GPS mod right now, so I have to be careful what I, what I'm actually doing. Uh, because if I uh, if I don't pay attention, I'm definitely going to screw things up. One thing it would be nice to see is if uh, if they modified this combine a little bit more, so the uh, the joystick actually moved when you put the push the acceler accelerator down. And uh, some of the Timber's uh, tractors actually do that, the newer ones now. Oops, don't miss any. Uh, some of the newer ones actually do that, and it's really sweet. Oh my goodness. Don't miss any. I wish I, one thing I wish this header had is like, uh, there's some of the headers have like a little, I don't know you call it, like, cutter, I guess. Basically, it's usually used for corn or something like that, and sometimes they have it on canola headers as well. But basically, what it does is it basically just indicates where the edge of the of the header is, and I'm pretty terrible at that. So, oh, coming up on 50%. Stop. Raise the header up. Do a little three-point turn here. Somewhat of a three-point turn. Hopefully that doesn't hit there. Whoa. And this is why I don't, uh, I'm bad at driving sometimes. All right, there we go. Perfect. Doesn't matter whether it's course player or me doing it, apparently. I still miss some of the, uh, oh, Chevy. That's funny. Was that, was that a Chevy? I don't remember. I want to say it might be a Ford. Um, that's what happens sometimes, actually. People will, uh, reskin older, other, other mods and make them into a, something they want. So, for example, that is a, I'm pretty sure it's a Ford, actually. But the information, if I had the inspector mod, it would probably say Chevy or something like that, so. We'll just let this guy unload. See? Look how fast that is. It's glorious. Love it. There we go. Send him on his way. Technically, if I wanted to do this uh, in the most realistic way possible, I would be driving. I would have a hired worker probably doing the combine, and then I would uh, do the unloading because then I probably wouldn't drive all over the crop. Right? Right. But I have to admit, this track, this combine goes a little bit fast. I don't realize I just put my foot down, and then I'm like, oh, right. 20 kilometers an hour is probably a bit fast. It also depends on the crop too, of course. If you're doing like, usually if you're doing a like corn or wheat or barley or oats, for example, if you have a high yielding crop, uh, you got to slow down. Or else you're going to just, what's going to happen is this, it's not going to be able to thresh fast enough actually. And as a side note, a lot of people have started uh, harvesting their fields uh, of corn. Uh, not, I'm not sure about corn, uh, but I've heard some people, I've seen some pictures of soybeans being harvested. I follow a guy on YouTube. His name's Jordan Wallace. He's from GPS Ontario, and uh, he uses a drone. Uh, when he's he actually sits in people's uh, tractors with them, usually in that seat right there, and he'll be flying a drone uh, from inside the cab, and then he'll be taking video of the combine uh, rolling or whatever else happens to be. Basically, what he's promoting is you know look how straight the lines are with a GPS controlled vehicle and all that. So. It's pretty awesome to watch though. I was at their booth last year at the Ottawa Farm Show, I believe it was. So, and that was pretty cool. Uh, was it last year, two years ago? I can't remember. But uh, checked out their booth and it was pretty awesome because they had like the GPS set up there and everything. So you get to get mess around with it and whatnot. One sec, coffee break. Mmm. Oh my goodness, such good coffee. It's coffee from BC. British Columbia, for those people who have no idea. I didn't say DC, I said BC. <laughs> British Columbia. Strangely enough, DC stands for, I think it's District of Columbia, if memory serves. Let me know in the comments. I think that's what it is. As many of you probably know already, I'm not an American. That's probably why I don't know these, these things. So It's not because I'm anti-American, it's just because... We just don't learn uh, about the geography of the United States very much, or all the names. 
There we go. Perfect. Nice. I think what we'll do is uh, we're just going to check. I'm going to hire a worker here for a quick sec. And then we're going to check on this guy right here and see how he's doing. He's just rocking through this field. I love how fast this is. Someone actually made this suggestion the other day uh, in the comments. I think it's kind of a, uh, an interesting suggestion. And it would be OP in the words of Valley Beast. Um, they said, why don't you make them into silage bales? And then sell them at the school. And, and that was kind of like, oh, oh. Because uh, each silage bale is worth about a $1,000. Uh, just over a $1,000. So I probably could make this course a bit wider looking at that. Anyways, uh, each each bale is worth a thousand dollars, or more like thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred dollars. So it would add up awfully quickly. Let's just say that. So unlike what do we have? Sixteen bales, you know, sixteen thousand minimum, which is pretty awesome. So keep that in mind. Eventually, what we might do is we might upgrade to baling technology. We might upgrade to this guy, which holds 32 bales. I've never actually used this, and I suspect it's probably o OP. <laughs> um, but also, I noticed this. This is the uh, the Flygo. It's an auto stacking trailer, but they actually incorporate different styles now. So they have like this style, and then they have the wood bottom, which is really cool. Um, and we actually have one of these trailers uh, right here. Uh, so if you look in look in the top. Uh, see if I can't get a better view here. If you look in the information up here, uh, you can change the loading type or the, so if you look at uh, loading types, so right now we're at hay bales, square, uh, hay square bales. Oh, that's automatic. No, oh, yeah. Loading type. Oh, okay. Uh, loading product. Oh, there we go. X. So we have square bales mixed and then round straw bales and it actually changes the trailer a little bit. If you look carefully, so if we go through, this is all round bales still. And this is silage round bales. Mixed. Wool pallets. Standard tree saplings. And it kind of, you can use a lot of different things in here. And I think it's viable blades. I don't know what that is. Consumption goods. Egg pallets, greenhouse pallets, milk. It's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's one of the cooler things. Uh, but it is an automatic loading trailer. Um, is it amazing? Yes. It's like the cat trailer, except I like this one better. This is a much, the person who did this did a much better job. What was this? Uh, did this guy totally miss like a huge chunk? Yeah, he totally did. Why on earth did it miss this huge section right here? Whatever. We'll let it slide. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Anyways. Maybe because I wanted to split the field in half? Who knows? 10 kilometers maxing out at? Hmm, interesting. One thing, I don't know why this is the case, but I, whenever you have a hard worker, you can't like look outside of the cab. It just, maybe it's a mod conflict of some sort, but I'm, this is a hard worker right now, but I can't like go outside the cab. But if I, if I have a course, if I it's course play, it's not a problem. Never understood that. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, someone asked me, where was it? Uh, if I go over to this guy again and look down here, Greg actually offered to fix this, and um, it's fine, Greg. It doesn't bother me. It, it bothered me initially, but now it's fine. And there's grass growing over it, so I don't notice it nearly as much. Uh, appreciate the offer, though. So it's all good. Um, if you really want to put soil mod into this map, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be down for that, um, but that's totally up to you, man. Anyways, uh, here we go. We'll fire this guy up. Here we go. I don't know why. I don't know what happened there. Obviously, he wasn't going in a straight line. Oh, that's right. Totally forgot that's the reason on this map. I'm like, what's going on there? What happened right there? But it's the straight line thing. Hard workers and all that jazz. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> see, look, look. That's where I hired the worker, and see how which, which direction he's going in. <laughs> yeah, he missed a little bit there. Oh well, that's fine. So, how's everybody been? Anything interesting happened with anybody yet? October is uh, tomorrow, actually. Today is September thirtieth. 
Uh, tomorrow's October 1st. Pretty in, pretty crazy when you think about it. And the reason why I say that is because October 30th is just around the corner, which means uh, Farm Sim DLC and Farm Sim uh, side panels coming out too. So that's pretty intense. It uh, has crept up awfully fast. Like I remember when it was first really first announced, and I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be kind of cool," and it just seemed like it was like you know, months and months and months away. Uh, but now it's like around the corner. That looks like silage, not canola, or maybe not silage, but hmm, that's weird. Usually canola is like black, like super super black. Like if I look back here, that's wow, yeah. There's smaller seeds than that, but. Canola is like a mustard seed, so it's super, super small. If you ever get a chance to see canola in real life, definitely check it out. It's uh, well. Here's here's what you could do if you want to see what it looks like. Get a or go find a, like a mustard seed and uh, compare basically, because that's basically what the size of a canola seed is. Because if memory serves, it is part of the mustard seed mustard family, I believe. I'm not an expert though. If you know if it's part of the mustard family, let me know. That would be fantastic. Although I'm fairly certain it is. Alright, let's get the last little bit here. So what we'll do is we'll finish up this field, just a small little field. And I guess we might as well just do this. Uh, 50%. Okay, let's go to the next one. I love that aspect of the drive control mod. It shows you how full the trailer is. So cool. Alright. Even the GPS mod on this map actually kind of messes around a little bit. I don't know why though. Someone was saying it's because the uh, the fields aren't straight. And that could very well be the reason, but I have not looked into it to be honest with you. Sure, let's just cut this field in half. Why not? Doesn't make a big difference. Actually, maybe it does. I don't want to have to come back up this area if I don't have to, so we'll do this way. Take out this little section here. But, um... Has anybody ever watched How I Met Your Mother? If you have, you'll know what uh, what I'm going to say then. There is an episode, or there's a, a few episodes that relate to this, but there's a... One of the characters in the show would say, but um, all the time. And uh, they made it into a game. <laughs> so whenever she said but um they would uh they would play their game sort of thing. So it was uh <laughs> I just randomly thought of that actually. I haven't watched that show in a long time. Uh the show I've been watching lately is called Gotham. Pretty good show. It's about Batman, essentially. But it's like uh before Batman was the Batman we know. And uh, it's been a pretty good I actually am enjoying it so far. Uh it just came on Netflix recently, so uh we decided to start uh start watching it, so it's been a pretty darn good show actually. Uh, one of the better ones out there, there's tons and tons of shows out there that aren't very good, so it's good to find a uh, an actually decent show because it doesn't happen often. Often you get a lot of, uh, well, what will happen for a lot of shows is like there'll be like one show that's like really, or one episode that's really good and then other episodes and it kind of goes downhill from there. It's unfortunate, but it happens. I have been watching a lot of YouTube lately. As per usual. That's where I get most of my entertainment from these days. I was watching uh, Caravare76 over on his channel. He uh, started up on Belgique Profonde. It's a Belgium map. map. Uh, it's funny though, he was talking about how the fact that that he used to play on the map. Um, he did a co-op series on the map with Hitman and uh, Fadman and some other friends that hopped on, but it was funny because yeah, he was comment or reminiscing, I guess maybe is the better word, about how he uh, at the end of the series he wasn't enjoying it as much, you know, and that happens sometimes, especially when you're playing on a on a particular map for a long, long time, and uh, everybody plays on the map differently. Like so if you're playing a co-op, it's different than uh, playing by yourself, for example. So. He was talking about that, and I thought it was kind of funny. I actually remember Belgium Profonde. It's actually a pretty neat little map. It's uh, it's an oldie, 
Uh, it's been around for a long time. I believe it was actually in the 2013 mod contest, I want to say. Was it the 2013 mod contest? I think it is. I think it was, I should say. Uh, it was in that mod contest back in the day. And it's still a fantastic map. They did a really good job. Uh, well, there's a couple of little aspects of the map I wasn't so like enthusiastic about. I think the main reason was, uh, or the main thing was, uh, the way you had to store your uh, grains because you had to use like a front loader to put them in and take them out. And that wasn't uh, something I was really like, yeah, let's try that. Uh, you could do it with course play though, so it's not a huge deal, but I don't know. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe I'm just too American, I don't know. Or Canadian or North American, we could say, so. Either or, really. I suppose that is the reason, so. That's not something we see a lot here. Uh, I think it's due, just due to the fact that the quantity of uh, grain is just, you know, enormous. So I'm trying to store, you know, a thousand acres worth of grain in, uh, in like a bunker like that. It's, I'm sure it's possible, but I don't know how, I don't think it happens often. Not in this area, at least. I don't know. I don't know why they do it out there either. Why? Uh, so here's a question. If you're from the UK, or yeah, I guess the UK, or maybe, or the Netherlands. I know there's a few people from the Netherlands that stop by as well. Uh, why? Why do they store grain in a bunker as opposed to like a vertical silo? Uh, let me know. I'm kind of curious. Maybe it's just because of easy handling, or that's the only storage available, perhaps? Uh, that would be my guess. But, uh, it always throws me off. And, well, it doesn't make sense to me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say a bit more. Request driver. Yes, please. Yeah, it doesn't make as much sense to me, so. But, uh, one of those crazy things. So you just, uh, you start thinking about it, and you're like, well, what, why, do, why do they do that? Like, it doesn't make sense because like for example it one of the reasons why they use vertical silos are like the, the silos that you see around now is because a you can like you can maintain moisture levels and stuff like that you can uh, i think you can technically dry your grain to a certain extent it's not like a a grain dryer per se but it's just more like a uh, uh getting the airflow through your grain i guess is what would be a better way so stuff like that also, I think it's a bit easier to uh, to measure how much grain you actually have as well when it's in a silo because you know how many tons are in the silo. Whereas uh, if you have like a open bunker, it's like how much is in the bunker. Then you have to be like, well, I guess you would know just based from harvesting, I suppose. But it's one of those situations where it's like, um, I think this is how much we have, but I don't know. Let me know if you know. Leave me a comment below. I'm curious now. This is what happens when you, uh, when you're just playing farm sim and things like that come into your mind. You're like, well, what exactly was going on there? Like, why exactly is that the reason? So, looks like we're hurting for money now a little bit, almost. So, I'm not sure whether to sell the. I, if we wanted to, uh, to turn the bales into silage and sell them that way, we could. Um, but we would have to get a wrapper, and I. Uh, I don't have it here, but I do have one in my mods folder somewhere. So I could easily do it. So, it's not impossible, that's for sure. But probably not very, uh, because what will happen is I don't, <laughs> like, we have an auto stacker, and I don't believe an auto stacker would normally pick up silage bales because they have spikes on the auto stacker to pick them up, so. It would be a bit, uh, interesting to say the least not a, you could do it probably I'm sure but in the game I know you can do it but in real life you definitely wouldn't so alright got like two passes left I think that would be my guess at least up around this corner here and I love how fast this combine goes makes a world of difference because uh, sometimes you have a slow combine and like getting to certain locations like on this map uh, right now going to like field 9 10 
uh, field 13 isn't a much of a problem but as soon as you start going to like you know other fields further away then it becomes a bit more of a problem just because with a slower combine it becomes a problem just because how long it will take to get there with a slow combine Nope, this is going to take three passes, it looks like. Apparently, we're going to fill up quickly here. Alright, nice. This map is turning out quite nicely, though. Or I should say, uh, this farm is turning out quite nicely. I'm kind of digging the uh, the OLF style of farming. I haven't, uh, I don't think I've ever done that before, so... It's interesting to have, uh, to mix and match like that. So having the, uh... having the uh, the hay farm style. It's very different. Apparently, actually, I was watching one of um, One Lonely Farmer's videos the other day, and he was saying he actually had a, not a very good hay crop this year, which is kind of kind of terrible. Uh, cause seeing as that's his primary business. Uh, he said, I think he was saying he's still, you know, he's still going to, you know, sell to his primary mushroom barn, but he's not going to be able to uh, sell to all of all the places he was originally going to contract out to. One sec. Coffee break. So that's a that's a bit of a shame, especially when you're trying to like you know like uh, you're trying to create connections and whatnot and you know do business and kind of you know essentially make more money in the end. So it's a shame that uh, didn't work out for him uh, for the three different barns, but or I guess it's a mushroom barn he said. So maybe it will be uh, maybe next year, but it's just you know. It's one of the uh, one of the things of farming, right? You know, you basically have to uh, deal with the weather. You can't really uh, change what the weather is like. So, in his case, he ran into a problem with you know, it was wet, then it was dry, and then it was not wet during the right times for the hay to grow properly. And you know, there's always something like that, right? That's always you know, it's not one thing, it's another thing. That's always the way it goes. So, I just realized I've been speeding this whole time. Oh well. And watch this. This combine's gonna be full, or pretty close to full, and I won't be able to unload all the canola into that trailer. I just have a, a sneaky suspicion that's going to be the case. And the crone's done, perfect. Look at that timing. Oh, we're gonna get all this in one single swath. Ah, nope. It's either one side or the other side, not both, apparently. Alright, let's get the last little strip there. It's gonna be a. Uh, gonna bug me if we don't get it there we go nice and then we'll finish up by unloading the combine excellent if only it always worked out this well in terms of timing nice I wonder if it's, this is gonna be the interesting part is the engine gonna fire up once uh, we unload the combine because in real life you have to. What does the survey say? I, I don't think it will. Some combines actually do though, which is really cool. No, didn't think so. Uh, the class 600 series I did a little mod mashup on the other day. It actually does do that, uh, which is really neat. That's what I thought was going to happen. See, look at that, 5,000 left over. Sheesh. All right, folks, that'll be it for me for today. I will uh, unload, this, load this, unload the combine, and then we'll uh, come back next episode, and I think we'll have uh, something else to work on. Well, that's it for me for today, folks. My name's Ian Robson. It's been Farming Simulator 2015 coming at you from Valley East, USA. And if you enjoyed yourself, why don't you go ahead and hit that share button. I'd really appreciate that. Catch you guys later.